dear students yesterday as told you about bonded and laminated apparel fabrics <coughs> and uh, today i will talk about fusible interlinings zippers elastic waist bands yarn strength and elongation the purpose of fusible interlinings is to give shape or form to a garment and improve its aesthetics there is no better way to test fusible interlining other than to actually fuse the interlining with the end item fabric and evaluate such specimens before starting mass production therefore at least 3 30 into 30 cm pieces of the end item fabric are cut and fused to 23 into 23 cm pieces of fusible interlining at the same time temperature and pressure recommended by the fusible interlining supplier manufacturer then these three specimens are checked for compatibility shrinkage and bond strength so remember these things compatibility shrinkage and bond strength compatibility means that the fusible interlining material should provide good drapability bulk and support without altering the natural hand of the end item fabric shrinkage can be measured by placing gauge marks on the interlining and shell fabric before fusing and measuring the distance between these gauge marks after fusing any significant shrinkage of the interlining fabric would result in a noticeable bubbled appearance on the right hand side of the shell slash interlining assembly bond strength can be determined by the using astm d2724 standard test methods for bonded comma fused and laminated apparel fabrics these specimens may also be used to evaluate fusing performance in laundering and dry cleaning according to the intended care instructions of the end item for defects such as bubbling cracking delamination etc the three controllable variables in the fusing process are time temperature and pressure if pressure is not sufficient the bonds will not sustain themselves in washing and or dry cleaning if too much pressure is applied a strike through on lightweight fabrics is possible but in most circumstances a change in hand will result in many cases with the new high temperature resins in the new high performance resins that are used today the introduction of too little or too much heat may affect the hand or drapability of a garment although it might not drastically alter bond strength so that is about fusible interlinings you are all, you are all interlining intelligent students so you can read listen again and carefully monitor yourselves with your cpu your cpu is your brain so monitor yourself before reading the fusible interlining topic and let it get into your cpu next 5.22 zippers 
there are following ASTM test methods for testing zippers. D2051 standard test method for durability of finish of zippers to long rain. D2052 standard test method for, for color fastness of zippers to dry cleaning. D2053 standard test method for color fastness of zippers to light. D2054 standard test method for color fastness of zipper tapes to crocking. D2057 standard test method for color fastness of zippers to laundering. D2058 standard test method for durability of finish of zippers to dry cleaning. D2059 standard test method for resistance of zippers to salt spray. D2060 standard test method for measuring zipper dimensions. D2061 standard test methods for strength tests of zippers. D2062 standard test methods for operability of zippers. So you have seen so many ASTM standards only for zippers. So think about how many more testing methods will be available. Only for zippers we have 10 testing methods, standard test methods. And Think of American standard text American standard of testing materials. <coughs> and you see how much work they have done behind the scene so that we all can read carefully and slowly and I have already shown you some videos of D2724. Find out, check my previous videos and find out what is D2724 standard test method. That is the assignment for you. The durability of the finish of zippers to laundering is evaluated by laundering the test specimen in a laundrometer AATCC test method 61 comma paragraph 5 comma procedure using test condition 3 slash A. I am very sorry hyphen a the effect of laundering on the zipper coating or finish is evaluated by noting the loss of coating on the zipper chain or components of or both the color fastness of a zipper to dry cleaning is tested by Subjecting the zipper stringer to commercial dry cleaning with a multi-fiber fabric. The dry cleaned specimen is compared with the original specimen and any change in the color of the specimen or staining of the multi-fiber fabric is then assessed a rate using the AATCC grayscale for color change or the chromatic transference scale so we are going very slowly but consistently <coughs> D2053 
The color falseness of zippers to light and crocking is tested in the same way as the color falseness of fabrics. I have already told you about the color falseness of the zippers in the previous classes. Color falseness of other materials, fabrics and other things. In the previous classes there are like 10 to 14 parameters in the color falseness. Parameters, what I mean by parameter, color falseness to light, color falseness to laundering, color falseness to washing, color falseness to fumes, color falseness to dry cleaning and so many other things. So dear students, now we will study about the color fastness of zippers to light and crocking and it is tested in the same way as color fastness of fabrics. The color fastness of zippers to laundering is tested by subjecting the zipper with a multi-fiber test fabric to home laundering according to the intended care instructions for the garments on which this particular zipper would be used. The alteration in shade of the zipper stringer tape and the degree of staining of the multi-fiber test fabric are evaluated by the AATCC. I hope you all remember what is AATCC. American Association of Textile Chemists and Colorists Chromatic Color Transference Scale The durability of the finish of zippers to dry cleaning <coughs> is tested by subjecting the zipper to dry cleaning. <coughs> as an AATCC test method but the zipper is air dried rather than hot pressed. The specimen is then evaluated visually for any, for any exposed base metal, <coughs> metal compared to a new zipper or compared to a sample illustrating an acceptable degree of coating loss. <coughs> Sometimes due to corrosion, a zipper will not operate smoothly. And its crossface strength may be reduced. So this is a corrosion is a new item that is not absorbed in the fabric, but it is absorbed in the zipper. So, corrosion means rust, rusting. <coughs> A zipper will not, so now I will read about corrosion. Sometimes due to corrosion, a zipper will not operate smoothly and its crosswise strength may be reduced. Such a deterioration in a zipper can be evaluated by subjecting the zipper to a salt spray test. Of course, plastic nylon zippers do not corrode and therefore this test applies only to metal zippers. So plastic and nylon zippers do not corrode. Everybody knows that. Plastic will not corrode but degrade itself, biodegradable. <coughs> some plastics are biodegradable, some plastics are not biodegradable. And therefore, this test applies only to metal zippers. In this test method, specimens are subjected to salt spray, 5% salt solution 
at 33 degrees to 36 degrees for 24 hours continuously <coughs> as directed in astm method b117 standard practice for operating salt spray operators annual book of astm standards volume 03.02 so what does it mean so you see authors are so much they he don't use any what do you call it is there is a standard procedure then he should say about this it is just a line written in the middle <coughs> so the expert so you will read uh, when you take the book and read you will understand these mistakes the exposed specimens are anyway lot of people anyway lot of people will do mistakes <coughs> <coughs> and by and large in textile industry generally there are many kind of mistakes i observed it if you do the same mistake in other branches they won't uh, allow printing itself but so what is that standard practice for operating salt spray operators there should be some prefix and suffix there should be some when you say there is air or there is water or something like that you should tell the topic what it is i am talking about panchabhutas so there is air there is water something like that. so it is a mistake by author then the results are compared with the ease of operation and cross wise strength of the original specimens the usefulness of a zipper in service can be evaluated by the following strength test no one test determines the suitability of a zipper for a specific end use <coughs> since the tests are interrelated more than one type of strength test may be needed for a complete evaluation zipper strength is usually tested in the following areas so these are important now whatever that is come going to come a to h these are important <clears throat> so zipper strength is usually tested in the following areas a cross wise strength the ability of a zipper chain to withstand the lateral stress is measured by loading to destruction a 1 inch section of the specimen in a tensile testing machine b scoop pull off the gripping strength of a scoop around the bead is determined by pulling a single scoop from the bead at right angles to the stringer using a tensile testing machine with a specially designed fixture <coughs> holding strength of stops the ability of stops to perform their intended purpose is determined through the use of five different methods that simulate the important stresses encountered in the end use of zippers these five different methods are top stop holding bottom stop holding slider 
bottom stop holding crosswise bottom stop holding stringer operation and bridge top stop comma stringer operation next one is scoop slippage the ability of a scoop to resist longitudinal movement along the bead of the tape <coughs> is determined with a tensile testing machine fitted with a specially designed fixture resistance to cushion compression of sliders the lower plateau of a compression tester is cushioned with a neoprene pad the specimen is laid on the pad and a load is applied then the operability of the zipper is tested on compared to the operability 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 okay <coughs> operability 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 is a wrong word of the original zipper i will just check if the word is there operability so operability operability operate so it is there so i am at mistake so sometimes i am also at mistake because i am a lecturer not anything more so scoop slippage i have read and resistant to cushion compression of sliders i have read that next slide deflection and recovery there are two procedures for determining the resistance of slider planes of zippers <coughs> to an opening or spreading force in one procedure the force is applied to the where are we slide deflection and recovery so this screen keeps on going so i have to look after that screen also there are two procedures for determining the resistance of slider planes of zippers to an opening or spreading force in one procedure the force is applied to the mouth of the slider in an alternative method the force is applied through the slider pull and back plane of the slider <coughs> resistance to twist of pull and slider in this method the twist resistance of a pull and slider assembly against a torsional force applied to the pull of the zipper is evaluated a fixture is used with a torque wrench to apply a specified twisting force to a slider <coughs> pull the amount of permanent twist imparted to the slider pull or the other permanent damage of deformation are noted the specimen is also examined for any other effects such as 
breaking of deformation of the lug or any other part of the assembly resistance to pull off of slider pull in this test with a special fixture tensile load is applied to the slider pull to determine how much force is required <coughs> to pull off the slider pull the operability of zippers is tested by pulling the slider with a force indicator such as a pull gauge along the zipper chain alternately in the opening and closing directions then the force required to maintain each movement is recorded the force required to move the slider on the chain is a measure of the ease with which the zipper will operate in end use applications <coughs> So dear students, I am experimenting continuously reading. So if students are there, we can explain and if there are any questions and then we can answer. But online, stu online study is very difficult and online teaching is not that easy we have to imagine that the students are in front of us and kind of I, in the earlier classes I have read it two times now I am reading one time this today I am reading one time because it is zippers i have already told you in the previous classes thoroughly in the earlier videos so i am just that's why i am just reading through because it is repeated again here about the zippers and <coughs> I will for you for you to not to get bored I will try to show and also learn on my part also So now I am test, I am testing, testing. <laughs> so zipper test for strength. If it is available on the net or not, that's what I am checking. <coughs> so we have completed zipper completely so this is we have something so when we get something we better go by it so just i will go by reading this by looking at this video so in the book everything is there but he has not talked about the testing machine <coughs> so you understand my point book he just talked about some things and he did not talk about actual testing 
Yes, uh, this is our QLQ zipper and slider strength testing machine. So now we are going to show to you how to test uh, the zipper strength by this machine. So just now our colleague has changed the clipper already. Now she's going to show to you how to test uh, zipper strength. So first uh, clipper, the zipper tape. It's coming down it's not very coming. slowly. Oh, man, it's going to take. How long it will take? Okay, now the clipper come down already. A little more for clipping the taper tightening. So, there are Chinese people, they are testing. Come down a little more. Zippers. And fixing the bottom and top Also, check the down sign has been clipping well or no. I think they are actually now it has been done. Okay, now let's operate the machine. Okay, so it has been separated already for the teeth. Now let's see, it's a 530. 4.5 okay so this is the process to test the zipper connecting strands so if you are interested for our this machine please feel free to contact us by email or welcome to visit our youtube or facebook to get more information about qlq zipper and slider strands testing machine thank you for your so that is about <coughs> zipper test. So he is doing something. I don't know what it is. Let us see metal zipper strength testing. So we have to always <coughs> unless there is a standard. Somehow. So it is Y shaped. You see the tester? Tester is Y shaped. Reverse Y.
那最高的算是啊，那最高的算。<coughs> so it is not so that is about that is one kind of tester so dear students it is a 40 seconds only so we can see it Some other department we don't know what is it exactly. So <coughs> so dear students, we have completed. Actually, I have told, I have dealt extensively about zippers in the previous class in the previous video lessons so and uh, maybe in the testing part of the um, chapter testing or somewhere I have dealt extensively about zippers it is came again and so the most important parts are we have crosswise strength the zipper strength usually tested in the following areas crosswise strength we have seen video of crosswise strength and scoop pull off Next one is holding strength of stops. Next one is scoop slippage. Next one is next one is resistance. Two cushioned compression of sliders slide deflection and recovery resistance to twist of pull and slider resistance to pull off slider pull that is another one thing <coughs> so in the next class which will be probably the i will read about elastic waist bands and I will try to read about elastic waistbands and yarn strength and elongation. And we have yarn number, yarn twist, sewing threads, color fastness, diameter, length per thread holder, strength and elongation, loop strength, shrinkage twist and twist balance 
and after that we have buttons so snap fasteners hook and lap loop fasteners and then we have functional properties and after that so we are testing so it's very easy we are almost completing third unit or fourth unit so thank you